Indication and Usage Calquens is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, or small lymphocytic lymphoma, SLL. Serious adverse events, including fatal events, have occurred with calquens, including serious and opportunistic infections, hemorrhage, cytopenias, second primary malignancies, cardiac arrhythmias, and hepatotoxicity, including drug-induced liver injury. My name is Dr. Yair Levy, and I serve as the Director of Hematologic Malignancies Research at Texas Oncology, Baylor Charles A. Sammons Cancer Center. I specialize in hematology, including lymphoma, myeloma, and leukemia. I see about 150 CLL patients at any given time. In CLL, there's no such thing as a typical patient. One patient may present symptomatic, while another patient may present with only an elevated white blood cell count. But there are some things we can expect. CLL is a disease that primarily impacts the elderly. As a result, many patients have comorbidities at the time of CLL diagnosis, and some comorbidities are cardiovascular related. For example, hypertension is an important comorbidity, and obesity and poor cytogenetics may also contribute to a patient's baseline risk. Additionally, managing hypertension is important, as some CLL treatments are associated with hypertension. Tolerability today can be different. From my experience, many of my patients who have been treated with a BTKI tolerate their treatment well. So, when it comes time to informing my treatment decisions, safety data, including cardiovascular risk, are important considerations. The reason I choose Calquins is based on its cardiovascular safety data specifically for its low rates of atrial fibrillation, hypertension, and major bleeding. Let's take a closer look at these. In Elevate TN, a study of patients with previously untreated chronic lymphocytic leukemia, there were low rates of atrial fibrillation, hypertension, and major bleeding in the group of patients who received calquins with or without obinutuzumab. Elevate RR was the first head-to-head -head trial of calquins versus abrutinib. It was a randomized, multi-center, open-label phase three trial of calquins versus ibrutinib in patients with relapsed or refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia with the presence of DEL17P and or DEL11Q. In this trial, the rates of atrial fibrillation, hypertension, and bleeding events with calquins remained steady over time. The overall incidence rate of any grade atrial fibrillation for calquins was 9% and for abrutinib was 16% at a median follow-up of 41 months, and 9% and 23% respectively for hypertension. For any grade bleeding events, calquins had an overall incidence rate of 38% and abrutinib had 51%. To learn more about calquins, take a moment to read through the study designs and additional safety data including the most common adverse events and events of clinical interest for Elevate TN, Elevate RR, and the ASCEND Phase three studies here. I'm comfortable with the Calquin safety profile based on my experience. Additional safety results from Elevate TN and first-line CLL showed that the discontinuation rates due to adverse events remain low in the Calquin's plus obinutuzumab arm with longer treatment exposure. This was also shown to be the case in Elevate TN for both Calquins monotherapy and combination therapy. For Elevate RR, at the 41-month median follow-up, discontinuation due to adverse events was 15% for patients taking Calquins, while in Ascend, at the 46.5-month follow-up, it was 23%. The cardiovascular safety profile is an important consideration. Based on the cardiovascular safety data and profile, which include low rates of atrial fibrillation, hypertension, and major bleeding, I choose Calquins. I also like to take into consideration additional analyses to help make informed decisions. While there's no head-to-head -head studies between Calquins and Xanabrutinib, the matching adjusted indirect comparisons, or MIACs, are helpful resources. Scan these QR codes to learn more. To learn more about Calquins, scan the QR code or visit calquinshcp.com. Indication and Usage
Calquence is a Bruton tyrosine kinase BTK inhibitor indicated for the treatment of adult patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, or small lymphocytic lymphoma, SLL. Important safety information about Calquence, acalabrutinib tablets. Serious and opportunistic infections. Fatal and serious infections, including opportunistic infections, have occurred in patients with hematologic malignancies treated with Calquence. Serious or grade 3 or higher infections, bacterial, viral, or fungal, occurred in 19% of 1,029 patients exposed to Calquence in clinical trials, most often due to respiratory tract infections, 11% of all patients, including pneumonia, in 6%. These infections predominantly occurred in the absence of grade 3 or 4 neutropenia, with neutropenic infection reported in 1.9% of all patients. Opportunistic infections in recipients of Calquence have included, but are not limited to, hepatitis B virus reactivation, fungal pneumonia, pneumocystis girovetsi pneumonia, Epstein-Barr virus reactivation, cytomegalovirus, and progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, PML. Consider prophylaxis in patients who are at increased risk for opportunistic infections. Monitor patients for signs and symptoms of infection and treat promptly. Hemorrhage. Fatal and serious hemorrhagic events have occurred in patients with hematologic malignancies treated with Calquence. Major hemorrhage, serious or grade 3 or higher bleeding, or any central nervous system bleeding, occurred in 3.0% of patients, with fatal hemorrhage occurring in 0.1% of 1,029 patients exposed to Calquence in clinical trials. Bleeding events of any grade, excluding bruising and petechia, occurred in 22% of patients. Use of antithrombotic agents concomitantly with Calquence may further increase the risk of hemorrhage. In clinical trials, major hemorrhage occurred in 2.7% of patients taking Calquence without antithrombotic agents and 3.6% of patients taking Calquence with antithrombotic agents. Consider the risks and benefits of antithrombotic agents when co-administered with Calquence. Monitor patients for signs of bleeding. Consider the benefit risk of withholding Calquence for three to seven days pre- and post-surgery depending upon the type of surgery and the risk of bleeding. Cytopenias. Grade 3 or 4 cytopenias, including neutropenia, 23%, anemia, 8%, thrombocytopenia, 7%, and lymphopenia, 7%, developed in patients with hematologic malignancies treated with Calquence. Grade 4 neutropenia developed in 12% of patients. Monitor complete blood counts regularly during treatment. Interrupt treatment, reduce the dose, or discontinue treatment as warranted. Second primary malignancies. Second primary malignancies, including skin cancers and other solid tumors, occurred in 12% of 1,029 patients exposed to Calquence in clinical trials. The most frequent second primary malignancy was skin cancer, reported in 6% of patients. Monitor patients for skin cancers and advise protection from sun exposure. Cardiac arrhythmias. Serious cardiac arrhythmias have occurred in patients treated with Calquence. Grade 3 atrial fibrillation, or flutter, occurred in 1.1% 1 .1 of 1,029 patients treated with Calquence, with all grades of atrial fibrillation, or flutter, reported in 4.1% of all patients. Grade 3 or higher ventricular arrhythmia events were reported in 0.9% of patients. The risk may be increased in patients with cardiac risk factors, hypertension, previous arrhythmias, and acute infection. Monitor for symptoms of arrhythmia, for example, palpitations, dizziness, syncope, dyspnea, and manage as appropriate. Hepatotoxicity, including drug-induced liver injury. Hepatotoxicity, including severe, life-threatening, and potentially fatal cases of drug-induced liver injury, DILI, has occurred in patients treated with Bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitors, including Calquence. Evaluate bilirubin and transaminases at baseline and throughout treatment with Calquence. For patients who develop abnormal liver tests after Calquence, monitor more frequently for liver test abnormalities and clinical signs and symptoms of hepatic toxicity. If DILI is suspected, withhold Calquence. Upon confirmation of DILI, discontinue Calquence. Adverse Reactions the most common adverse reactions, greater than or equal to 30% of any grade in patients with CLL were anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, headache, upper respiratory tract infection, and diarrhea.
Treatment emergent decreases, all grades of hemoglobin, platelets, and neutrophils were based on laboratory measurements and adverse reactions. In patients with previously untreated CLL exposed to calquents, fatal adverse reactions that occurred in the absence of disease progression and with onset within 30 days of the last study treatment were reported in 2% for each treatment arm, most often from infection. Serious adverse reactions were reported in 39% of patients in the Calquence plus obinutuzumab arm and 32% in the Calquence monotherapy arm, most often due to events of pneumonia, 7% and 2.8% respectively. Adverse reactions led to Calquence dose reduction in 7% and 4% of patients in the Calquence plus obinutuzumab arm, N equals 178, and Calquence monotherapy arm, N equals 179, respectively. Adverse events led to discontinuation in 11% and 10% of patients, respectively. Increases in creatinine to 1.5 to 3 times the upper limit of normal, ULN, occurred in 3.9% and 2.8% of patients in the Calquence combination arm and monotherapy arm, respectively. In patients with relapsed refractory CLL exposed to calquents, serious adverse reactions occurred in 29% of patients. Serious adverse reactions in greater than 5% of patients who received calquents included lower respiratory tract infection, 6%. Fatal adverse reactions within 30 days of the last dose of calquents occurred in 2.6% of patients, including from second primary malignancies and infection. Adverse reactions led to calquence dose reduction in 3.9% of patients, N equals 154. Dose interruptions in 34% of patients, most often due to respiratory tract infections followed by neutropenia, and discontinuation in 10% of patients, most frequently due to second primary malignancies followed by infection. Increases in creatinine to 1.5 to 3 times ULN occurred in 1.3% of patients who received calquence. Drug interactions. Strong CYP3A inhibitors. Avoid co-administration of calquents with a strong CYP3A inhibitor. If these inhibitors will be used short-term, interrupt calquents. After discontinuation of strong CYP3A inhibitor for at least 24 hours, resume previous dosage of calquents. Moderate CYP3A inhibitors. Reduce the dosage of calquents to 100 mg once daily when co-administered with a moderate CYP3A inhibitor. Strong CYP3A inducers. Avoid co-administration of calquents with a strong CYP3A inducer. If co-administration is unavoidable, increase the dosage of calquents to 200 mg approximately every 12 hours. Specific populations. Based on findings in animals, calquents may cause fetal harm and dystocia when administered to a pregnant woman. There are no available data in pregnant women to inform the drug-associated risk. Advise pregnant women of the potential risk to a fetus. Pregnancy testing is recommended for females of reproductive potential prior to initiating calquence therapy. Advise female patients of reproductive potential to use effective contraception during treatment with calquents and for one week following the last dose of calquence. It is not known if calquence is present in human milk. Advise lactating women not to breastfeed while taking calquents and for two weeks after the last dose. Avoid use of calquents in patients with severe hepatic impairment, child pew class C. No dosage adjustment of calquents is recommended in patients with mild, child pew class A, or moderate, child pew class B, hepatic impairment. Please see full prescribing information, including patient information.